Last week we talked about the woman with the issue of blood. More, that's how she's known by, but she's known by being healed <laughs> with the issue of blood. And we said that she, by all rights, by the Levitical law, she was unclean. By all rights, she had to holler when she would go into a crowd, unclean, I'm unclean. She didn't have to write. She had to stand on the edge of the crowd. She had to stand without. She could not go into the crowd because anyone who touched her would become unclean. And the very fact, I'm just summarizing last week, and the very fact that since she didn't cry out that she was unclean, <laughs> and someone found out, she could be stoned according to Levitical law. She could lose her life. So she had to go beyond what her natural man said. She had to go beyond what the religious tradition of her day said. That you can't do this, or this can't be done, or God doesn't do that. God doesn't heal today. <laughs> she had to go beyond what the religious tradition of her day. She didn't, and in other words, she didn't have, she didn't care about what men's opinion, what the religious church of her day, what tradition said about her. She did not care. She had to press through what the other people, the opinions of, of other people, she had to press through, because we're human, and we like to please people if we can. We like to, we like people to like us. You know, we like people to like us. We don't want to be unliked or unlovable. Or, and so we, she had to press beyond that. She had to press beyond everything that her natural man said. She had to go beyond the religious tradition, which said, you can't, you can't be in that crowd. You can't touch these. She said... But she said to herself, she said she had heard about Jesus, she heard that Jesus was healing the sick, and so she said to and said her first one were her words, she believed in her heart that she had hope that she could that she could receive the healing that she was hearing about. She had hope in within herself that 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 Jesus would do this for her. And see, that went beyond man's opinion. It went beyond. She had this hope. So as a result of having this hope, she said, that's the power of your words. She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She spoke her faith. It's Romans 10, 9 and 10. With the mouth, uh, with the heart man believeth, but with the mouth confession is made unto. You are the sum total of your thoughts and that which you believe in your heart. So your mouth must speak. You ever wonder what, what's in your heart? Well, check your words. <laughs> what's in your mouth? What are you speaking out your mouth? What are you thinking about? Anyway, so I'm not doing that today. But, but anyway, she had to press beyond. And the neat thing about it is there, there was a bunch of people thronging Jesus. There were a bunch of people pressing in on him. They all were touching him. There was a lot of people touching him. But one woman said, that if I but touch, she spoke her faith. She spoke what God, God, what she believed. She'd seen what God was doing. She'd seen what Jesus did. She spoke her faith that God would do that for her. So she pressed through. But they all were touching. And the neat thing about it is, Jesus didn't check to see if she was worthy first. Jesus didn't stop and say, now wait a minute, did you pray enough? <laughs> He said, who touched me? But he didn't. Did you pray enough? <laughs> Have you fasted? Have you given to the church? Have you done all these things? No. See, the, there is a spiritual laws of the kingdom of God that we haven't yet got a hold of, or that we're getting a hold of, but there are, are spiritual laws in the kingdom of God, and that is, and that spiritual law was, is you receive by faith what God appropriated, not based on what you do or your works, but strictly based on faith. All them other people were touching, but none of them were touching him with faith. Nothing, none, of, none of them had, had hope that Jesus would heal them. They had to have hope. They didn't speak their words. They didn't speak that what they didn't see. They knew what Jesus was doing, but they didn't, didn't believe that he, he would do that for them. See, it, was, it wasn't based on her worthiness. He, God didn't say, now wait a minute, you're, are you worthy? <laughs> You see, Jesus provided that. God provided through Jesus the atoning work of grace. And that grace provided regardless of your ability to earn it. Because it said grace is unearned. You don't deserve it. Hallelujah. We don't deserve it. He still gives it. He's provided. Amen. But so she wasn't worthy. God didn't stop and say, wait a minute, are you worthy? <laughs> no. Faith on unmutable 
law of faith, the unchangeable spiritual law in the kingdom of God, is that you receive strictly by faith. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on works. That's what Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and we've said that for, I don't know how many weeks in a row. For by grace are you saved. That means God provided it not based on any of your own righteousness or your works or you're such a good person. Strictly by grace that He loved us enough that He gave. Amen? So, just to bring you up to where we are. Anyway, she reached out, she touched Him, and faith produced. She received. Jesus said, who touched me? And you know, we taught it last week. Who touched me? So, right there shows that, you know, God didn't check who she was first before he, she received. He did not check that at all. Because he said, Jesus said, who touched me? I mean, you know, he didn't stop and virtue went out. Or wait, wait a minute, before I let this virtue go out of my body, out of my spirit, before I let this virtue go out, I need to check and see if you're, if you, you're ready, <laughs> if you did enough to, to deserve this. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve anything. Jesus did. It's all based on what Jesus deserved. Jesus purchased the price. Amen. All right, moving on. Luke chapter 5. This is another one I'm going to do again. And we talk about what God provides, but you've got to get into the Bible. You've got to study the Word and find out what God provided through Jesus. You see, you can only believe for that which He's already provided. You can't believe for something that He didn't provide. And that's why you're not coercing God. You're not making Him do anything. He's already done it on the cross. Jesus already provided. Amen. Luke chapter 5. This is another case. This is um, the paralyzed man. Luke chapter 5 will summarize. There were scribes and Pharisees. They were all sitting around when Jesus was teaching. There were scribes and Pharisees sitting. And basically their house was full. So they brought this man in this paralyzed man, they had to lower him down through the roof. But he had scribes and Pharisees in there. And then verse 19 says, And when they could not find how that they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up into the housetop and let him down. Luke 5, 19. Let him down with his bed through, through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, you see, just stop there a second. Your faith will bring, will bring about a corresponding action. If you really believe in the promises of God, it will produce change in your life. You will not stay the same. It will produce change. The faith that you believe in, the Jesus that you believe in, He will produce change in your life. You will not be the same. He saw, how did He see their faith? They tore up the roof to get the man in there. I mean, what are you willing to tear up to get to Jesus? What are you willing to tear up, <laughs> throw out of your way to get to Jesus? Amen? Hallelujah. They tore up the roof. <laughs> I wonder what the homeowner thought about seeing his roof being torn up. <laughs> Jesus didn't look at that. Did he? he didn't look at the natural. He didn't look at, you know, what the man might think. He saw their faith. What, what blesses Jesus? In your life. When he sees your faith. When he sees the, the corresponding action to your faith. He sees your faith by your corresponding action. Hope is one thing. To have hope that God might do something. But when you begin to act on that. What God has already really. What God has already done. It produces change. It pleases God. He sees your faith. How did he see their faith? Because they tore up the the roof and let the man down in because they said, this man's going to be healed. This man's going to be healed. Jesus is going to heal this man. He saw their faith. And of course, the scribes and Pharisees were all sitting around the religious people today. Well, gee, who, who didn't do this? He, when he saw their faith, he said to them, man, you, your sins will be forgiven. <laughs> and you know who didn't like that. Scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this to speak as blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus perceived their thoughts. He answered and said to them, Why reason ye in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say unto you, rise up and take up your bed and go to your house. You see, which is it easier? 
I mean, which is it easier to say, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, or take up your bed and walk? Well, obviously, it's if you're just going to say something, it's easier to say, Son, thy sin, your sins are forgiven. Because there's no earthly manifestation that you can see to understand or to really contradict that. You know, there's really. There's no contra there's no evidence, there's no physical manifestation. So Jesus said he did what they, the scribes and Pharisees, not for God. God it's nothing for God. God can say that sons sins be forgiven. You know, and it's not go fed. But for the scribes and the Pharisees, for those sitting around, it was the harder thing to tell the man, get it, take up your bed and walk, you're healed. And so he did the, what they considered to be the harder thing, not for God, but from man's perspective. He did what the harder thing was. He said, take up thy bed and walk. Your son, your sins are forgiving you. He said, um, I say to you, arise, take up your bed. And immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And when they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled, filled with fear, saying, What strange things have we seen today? Do you think it's strange when you see God heal something? <laughs> or when he heals you? <laughs> or do you think it's strange when you hear somebody speak in tongues? <laughs> you might if you don't have the baptism. <laughs> It's not a strange thing, it's just natural. I mean, it's supernatural in that sense, but it's a common thing for God. It's a common thing for Christian believers. It's a common thing for the early church. It's a common thing for spirit-filled churches. It's not strange. It might be to you, because you haven't experienced it, but it's available. But see, what I'm, what I'm, <coughs> my point is that God's already provided. We look and say, you know, Healing, some people say that healing is a byproduct, it's, it's a bonus. It's not a bonus, it's every, bit, it's every bit a part of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. It's no harder for God to heal your body, it's no harder for you to confess, to receive your healing, than it is to confess Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. There is no difference. You didn't earn salvation, you weren't unworthy, you weren't worthy of it, you couldn't earn it. You didn't merit salvation. And the same thing goes with healing. There is no difference. Healing is the same. We don't put healing... We should not, as a church, as Christian believers, we should not put healing at a lower level or a lower benefit or as a byproduct or as a bonus. It is every bit a part of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 103, 1 through 3 says, hey, and this is David, a psalm of David, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Have you forgotten some of the benefits of God today? Or do you think you just got to do this, live this life on your own? What you can do, your way, limited to your way, limited to your abilities. You are not. If you're a Christian, you're born again. And you're serving, not that you're serving God earns it, but that your heart is all in, amen. You're all in the kingdom. You're all in Jesus Christ. You're all about Jesus Christ. You're all focused, your attention on Him. And it's not those things that earn it. It's just, hey, I know who I belong to. <laughs> he said, bless the Lord and forget not all of His benefits. Do you forget the benefits of God? I mean, most people think, well, you know, they go to work and they have a job and they have benefits, you know. <laughs> they got health insurance and life insurance. Some of them have life insurance. Some of them in retirement to the 401ks. You know, there's all kinds of benefits. Well, you know, did you forget about all the benefits it is? Benefits of God. The benefits of having Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There are benefits. Forget not all these benefits. Verse 3 says, Who forgives all of your iniquities and heals all your diseases. He never separates the two. He never for separates forgiveness of sin from the healing of your body. It is all the package deal.